So, um, apologies for becoming a dog YouTube channel, but today is actually Julian's birthday. It's Wednesday, the 17th of April. We started this process in January. We bought our house and I know a lot of you guys have known that we wanted to adopt a Greyhound for a long time. And once we got settled in the house, we did it for 2019. It was our goal to adopt a Greyhound and it has been a little bit of a lengthy process and it's a good thing because, oh, sorry, we just got home. Many of the Greyhounds are getting adopted. So we waited for a little while to have the opportunity to adopt a Greyhound, which is great. Um, we've been working with an organization called Graysave and some of them are ex-racing Greyhounds, but that is not the dog that we're getting. Greyhounds have universal blood and it is something that they use when a dog needs surgery or when a dog needs a blood donor, basically, they have greyhounds that donate blood. And this little girl is one of those dogs. It's really cool that Grey Save not only saves racing greyhounds, but any greyhound really that needs a home. So we knew that was a possibility that we were gonna get one of these dogs. And we just got the call tonight on the way home that they have a little girl ready for us and she's in her foster home and i'm like beside myself i'm so excited she's apparently very timid and very shy but we already went through the whole process they came and did a home visit they met these guys and they deemed us a worthy adopting family so yeah and the um guy at grace have got to know our dogs and learn the dynamics and he said he'd be surprised if uh this new girl that we get wasn't at the bottom of the of the pecking order <laughs> so peach might be like an actual older sister to this dog she's we all three. view peach as like this baby but this dog is three and she's very timid and it's a little complicated because well i haven't told you guys yet but in may well we've been planning a vacation for like like a year as many of you know we literally never take vacations they're always for work but we actually decided we are going on vacation uh the first week in may so we were waiting until after that week obviously to spend more time with him but the guy that we've been working with at gray save has been placing dogs in homes for like decades so when he says he has a dog that's right for our family i trust him and he wants us to you know get her as soon as we can and then she'll probably stay with her foster home while we are on vacation, but we'll have a little bit of time here with her. A good couple of weeks. I know I'm nervous though. I'm nervous to like leave her, you know, right after we get her. I don't want her to get confused, but yeah. like that's just, I feel like how life works, you know? Like the time when you're not expecting it is when you get them. You guys are getting a sister. Peachy. Are you excited? Peachy, you're gonna be a big sister. Peachy, you're not the baby anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Still my baby. I'm just like, I'm so over the moon excited. I don't think we're gonna film obviously the whole process, but we'll film, you know, as much as appropriate. It's gonna take a lot of time and patience. Are you ready for this, bud? Marble, this is your final step in life, honey. It's the final step of your journey is to befriend a big, large dog. We're literally going to get her on Friday. It's Wednesday right now. It's Wednesday night right now. We're going to get her on Friday. Like, it's been a dream of mine to have a full-size greyhound, a rescue greyhound, for like my entire life. <laughs> Are you excited? I'm so excited. We were in an Uber and I was like trying not to cry and like be inappropriate. <laughs> It's a birthday present for sure. I'm gonna cry. I cry every time. I already have been crying a little bit. <laughs> I can't help it. The idea of having your new dog forever, that you go on a long, long life journey, it's the only times that I like really cry on the internet, that is. This is the last time we're gonna have a three dog pack. Pretty soon it's gonna be a four dog pack. Are you so excited, honey? It's been so much boy energy. It's just you and me. We're getting a third girl. We're finally gonna even out the troops here. Three men, am I right? Three boys and three girls. I have all of the fears of like, you know, anytime you get a dog, like, are they gonna like it here? Are they gonna like our pack? Are we gonna be good dog parents and do right by them? Like, I'm just overwhelmed and happy and scared and excited and everything. So, well, we'll check back in with you on Friday, I guess. It is. Friday, my dudes, ah! Yesterday and Wednesday night were incredibly distracting and hard to focus on anything other than being very excited. Today, we are done with our work and it's time to go to the pet store and just get like some basic stuff for our new baby girl. So we're gonna go do that and then we're gonna go pick her up. At six. 
and we're gonna have them all meet together outside at the park and then bring them home all together. Yeah, we're gonna take them for like a yeah. walk. We're not gonna have them meet in the house. You're gonna get sister. Kermit okay. says, what is sister? Do not know that what is sister. <laughs> what What is sister? Bless you. I was saying to Julian, we got Peach five years ago now, but like, Peach is Julian's baby, you know, like I'm her mommy, but it was Julian getting peachy. But for me, it's been 11 years ago and nine years ago since I've done this. I'm not gonna put on makeup because I'm gonna cry it off. I like, I can't, I'm so excited. Okay, we're gonna go for a ride. We're gonna go out of the house, okay? We'll get you out of the house, get you a little tired. We're not buying you anything. I'm kidding, I'll probably buy you guys something. You guys ready to do this with four dogs? It's a process enough with three. Let's do it. Let's get out of our minds. I know you think it's yours, but it's not yours. So now that we have some stuff, we are at the park because tired dogs are happy dogs. And we have the best chance of success with tonight going smoothly if the dogs are tired. So we gonna exhaust y'all in a good way so that when you meet the doggy, we have nice calm dog energy and not crazy Kermit Peach marble energy. <laughs> Before and after you guys tired very tired we drove across town and we we're of course very early we're about an hour early we're just gonna sit here and try and distract ourselves for an hour because <laughs> we're so excited oh i just want to meet her well i'll play 20 questions or something when we do go into her foster home I am not gonna be filming. I don't wanna ask, I think it's inappropriate. So we're just gonna go in, we're gonna meet her and move on from there. So the first time that you guys will see her will probably be in the car. Our goal is to take Clary to the park. I'm going to take the car back to our house and get our dogs. And I don't know the name of the method, but it's basically one by one, you introduce them, you know, in a neutral space, like at a park or somewhere that's not the dog's house. Starting with our most socially confident, which surprised many of you I know, is Kermit. And you just sort of meet, positive reinforcement, distract them, positive reinforcement, distract them. And then you go dog by dog. Uh, hopefully we'll then get all three of them or two of them at once, you know, to interact with her or not at all, that's fine. And then go for a walk together and then bring them to the house. So. It's gonna be a while until we get back home with her, but I think it's beneficial for us to take the time and do that. And they should be all very tired at this point too, so. Jenna. Yeah. This is our baby. She's three years old. Her name is Clary, but apparently she doesn't know it. It was just sort of, you know, an identification and she was not a racing dog, so she didn't have a racing name. So we can, in theory, name her, hello whatever we want. She's very timid. She was sleeping in the corner of her foster daddy's house. Like not even in the corner bed, like between yeah. the bed and the wall. She was She's very timid. Very small, very sweet. I cried like a little baby the second that I saw her. And I can't believe that she's our baby girl. Right. We gotta think of a name if we're gonna rename her. We could name her another fruit. <laughs> what if we call her Peach too? I'm cool with peach too. <laughs> peach too. Peach too. In the it. streets. Hey, oh. guess what? We're going on a long, long life journey together. Are you excited? Going on a long, long life journey. What do you think about staying here with her? I'll get the dogs yep. and we get this show on the road before it gets dark. Let's do it. I'll be right back, okay? I love you. We don't know what to call you. I think we're just going to call her baby for right now. Here. Oh. Here, you say hi? This is your brother. That's your sister. This is your brother. Yeah. His name's Kermit. You like Kermit? That was like no contact. If she's like done being interested, that's <laughs> totally fine. Good. Okay. Good job. Hey. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. I know, it's scary. Good girl, Peach. Good girl. All right, we're walking them all together now. And we just have her little, uh, good her girl. mask on for precaution. Look at you go, Peach. You're doing so good. Good job, everyone.
mommy's plants. Hi! <laughs> no, this is one of the Iggy's poops. Oh, I'm sorry, I almost poked you in the eye. Hi. I want to give you a hug. I love you so much. Welcome home. Welcome home. So her foster dad told us that she is not comfortable eating like in the kitchen, so to feed her where her bed is, so we're gonna feed her over here. Come in. Good girl. All right, your own that safe little spot. Wet from her drinking. All right, let's give her some privacy, guys. Come on, feed you come. All right, what are we doing? Well, we're helping her up the stairs because I don't want to like put her in the living room or something in like a game room or in a room by herself because I'm worried we can't hear her or you know she's like crying or chewing on something. So we're helping her up the stairs. I don't think this one's ever gone upstairs. We just went up that one flight and now we're gonna go up the second one, honey. You can do it. Good. Foster dad did warn us, but she's terrified of the TV. Yeah. Terrified. Not the sound, but the, the sight, visual. Yeah. Well, hopefully the goal is to have you sleep with us in this room. Maybe on the floor, on this little couch, but it's not gonna happen for a little bit. We still have some general desensitizing to do. The Iggy's are doing really good. Like, we knew they were gonna be fine and they're doing better than I expected. But I don't think they would have been helpful during that stare process, so. Oh, we did notice that when Kermit cries, which is all the time, she cries back at him. So maybe they'll cry at each other and create a dimension and then both go into it. <laughs> I know you don't know what sit means, but you wanna come over here in your bed? So they advise every day, oh, she's good. Just making sure you just get like any chunks or particles of food out of their teeth. Oh, she's good at this. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Yes. Right in those ones. Oh, that felt weird, huh? What a good girl. Good girl. Okay, you can be done. What a good little angel. Hey, that's a lot of licking chicken. You have a stressful day. I know it's a lot. You're doing okay, honey. The Iggy's are so good. You're doing okay we did put her in a soft crate and she's doing fine she's a very small greyhound but we might get a better crate and as much as i'd like her to just like be on the bed on the ground i was still you know we don't as much as i love her and think she's so sweet you know she's a dog that we don't know and we do need to take all the safety precautions that we can so she's sleeping in a crate and she's doing okay we're gonna wake up Bright and early in the morning and have a full day of doing dog things. Good morning! Hey, go on me, there she goes! Okay, easy, easy, easy. Good job, good job! Should I take her off or back? Don't you drink that! Don't drink that! <laughs> Don't drink that! Come oh my on. god! Let's go, come on! Well, she doesn't mind stepping in the pool, that's for sure. <laughs> Don't oh drink that. Don't drink that. You can't drink that. You know where your water is. You know where your water is. She's like, I can't help it. It looks so nice. You keep trying to drink pool water. <laughs> it's not, it's it's not, not for you. It doesn't taste good. She's like a clumsy girl. Hi. You little clumsy three-year-old. <clears throat> Hi. 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 It's nice we can kiss her without having to pick her up. Yeah, you kiss you. you just, your face is right here. Oh, you. is it right there? Look at her leg. Oh, look at the leg. Well, the tough thing is, is that she obviously doesn't 
respond to her name or know any basic commands. So if you say like, no, get out of the pool, she just keeps she's not that. used to responding to a person. <laughs> So when we walked around the park, we didn't film, but we we really needed all hands on deck, obviously. Um, it's her first like daytime walk. And she was doing really well. We passed some baseball fields and she was good. There are a lot of people, uh, you know, kids. And then we got to the part where there's like basketball courts and tennis courts and soccer. And she was getting like, I would say alarmed. You know, she's not like trying to run. She's not like scared but we realized she's never heard a ball in her life. Like she was a little alarmed by the basketball sound and the soccer sound and the tennis sound. And she just watched and listened and, but she was good, but it's just funny. Like we're realizing all the things that she's probably never been exposed to in her life, which is crazy. Cause you know, you don't, we don't think twice about it walking around the park that there's people playing soccer or basketball, hello. She was willing to sit there and just sort of listen. So it'll just be a series, I think, of desensitizing her and just getting her comfortable with the sounds. And it's what's helpful is that our neighbor is out there playing basketball <laughs> this afternoon. So she's in our yard listening to a basketball and was okay with that. So it's just crazy. It's crazy the amount of firsts she's probably gonna have, you know, and just reminds you to always remember that she's never seen the world so what a good time just do little things and then little breaks and then little things and then little breaks so what we're doing now is we are moving all the toys because last night she came in she was very excited obviously it was an exciting day and the house is filled with toys because our dogs have a million toys that they only play with on occasion but she, of course, started playing and, you know, getting excited and running around and was getting a little bit of, like, toy aggression. Like, when Julian tried to grab it from her, you know, it was a big growl, like, a little bit like, no, this is mine, which is fine, but that's something that we have to work on. And obviously, she ripped off the ear of one of the toys and immediately tried to eat it. So, <laughs> toys are good. Toys are great. Not good for your health. We will probably need some training yeah. and some supervision with toys so we are now moving the toys so we can have them one at a time and we can do some good positive reinforcement with the toys you have a visitor hi mumble do you want to say hi to her okay so if she gives you boundaries you have to respect them because she's been very respectful of your boundaries this is her bed okay good job marble and we're working on one bark when she's in your space is okay. But when you're just barking, that's not okay. Okay? Boundaries are okay. Being mean is not okay. Well, we're in the stream room. Uh, she's very scared of screens, uh, particularly the TV. It's not the sound, it's the visual. So we brought her into the game room to see how she would do. And it only took her a couple minutes to be pretty much desensitized to it. I yeah. imagine, you know, we'll run into some challenges. But for the most part, she sat in her bed and ate treats, so... Peach, honestly, what the hell? Hi, baby. See the screens? You're doing so good, honey. I promise you it's not scary. We had to, like, go up to the monitors and, like, physically touch them to show her that they're, like, flat and not three-dimensional not things that are gonna jump out and get her. She really just wants to go outside, like genuinely wants to just be outside. Who can blame her? Looks like we're gonna be able to... I think someone just over. I think she heard, like, the bridge. Yeah, there's a lot of noises. What do you think, honey? We'll do a little of this and then we'll go outside, okay? It's the fridge. <laughs> Whenever the fridge sort of like turns on and off, she's like, um, what the hell was that? Happy Easter, guys. Happy Easter! A little lady sat in the game room. What was it, for about three or four hours last night? Yeah, about three or four hours. And right now we're just having some leash and no muzzle time. And already Kermit started crying, so she started crying at him. She has been very respectful of normal space, which is why you don't hear any barks or excitement. This has been I would say, well, it's harder because of their size discrepancy, but easier than Peach because 
Peach was a puppy and she was just nonstop in his space. Did not respect his space, do not understand what that is. So that was an exhausting, I'd say three years until they got really comfortable with each other. Peach's first like two years, oh aged God. marbles like 10 years. <laughs> he just like just started growing gray hair yeah. immediately. But I, th I honestly think like between going up and down the stairs because she's starting to get that mm -hmm. between feeding time and between crying for a walk she's like actually starting to understand the routine a little bit yeah she's scared of everything but she's like so willing to learn she's not like you know fearful and avoidant she's just like a little curious and like what is that and then totally willing to learn like you said this morning when you got up she went down the stairs right yeah she pretty she went down the first like we have two flights like separated by a landing and she went down the first flight like she knew what stairs were <laughs> so like i'm a little scared but progress. i'm really willing to learn how was that wet hair was it good it's good wet hair look at you yeah happy easter honey happy easter baby we're so lucky to have you Parts of this are a lot easier than a puppy, and parts of it are harder than a puppy. <laughs> I know. She wants to play. She wants to play with you guys, but she's being respectful. So we had a great walk. We did so much better with the basketballs and the soccer balls. We even got to smell a basketball. She met some people. Yeah, people touched you. It was a lot easier today, although you were scared by a fruit stand with an umbrella. Oh, you want to get up and run? This is like her spot. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hi. I feel like on walks and in the yard, the boys bark less because now they feel like they have protect, even though she's not protecting them at all. Please don't judge me if any of my plants die. I had my hands full. She's having a good time in her bed, no muzzle, relaxing. That's her safe spot. And um, the person, Tim, we were working with at Gray Save gave us the very sound advice that this is her bed. She tried a couple times to jump on the couch and obviously Julian and I would love to have her on the couch and to cuddle with her, but that, you know, invades their safe space. But, you know, usually when we have little dogs over, they're jumping on the couch, they're face to face with marbles, like in his safe space. So I think he's been very, very, very tolerant of her because she's not invading his space at all. She's not interested and she picks up on his social cues and she like has her own space and it's just made a world of difference for us. I think we're picking a name. We don't know yet. We know. And uh, we're just working on some basic commands like just getting her attention when you're talking to her and coming over to us. We worked on come for a minute. Like we need to work on life-saving commands for her, sit, stay, and come. But for the most part, it's just about like getting her attention and getting her to respond. This is really, really good three-day progress. And she's smiling today. And you're so desperate for attention. This is like, I wanna say 70 million times quieter than when we got Peach. And she would lunge at him, and <laughs> nibble on his ear, and we would hear, <laughs> She for three years straight. Like a cannonball at him. For three years straight. That was the only noise we heard. All right. It is Monday morning. My dude. Everyone had breakfast and we had a couple phone calls, but we were just out here while Julian was on the phone. <laughs> and this is like what she does. Once she's like comfortable and having a good time, there's no getting her up that easily. You have to Come on, buddy. Come on, bunny. Hey, we're gonna go for a walk. Come on, baby. Alright, you gotta get up. I'm gonna stand you up. Oh, baby bird. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. She cries every time she smells Kermit. <laughs> she can, like, smell his she sadness. She can smell his stress and sadness. She also cries because she wants Peach to play, but yeah. we still have to work on that. Everybody's outside. We haven't had her muzzle on for the most part, really, at all. But. We do keep her leash on, you know, just in case things got out of hand, we wanted to grab her. But I've been trying to get her interested in toys, just to see if she has any, like, resource hiding, whatever they call it. You know, if a dog gets really attached to something, would she snap at one of the other dogs? And at least outside, she just doesn't really want to play rope or ball or anything. She kind of just wants to hang. We've been running around trying to get her to chase us. And it is the laziest chase I think I've ever seen. Kermit and Peachy and Marble all walk up to her and sniff her while she was laying down and she just did a good sniff and then 
big head on the ground. Oh, wow, she's making it in the rope finally. And we're done being interested in the rope. Still a little like not in the mood to play. Just trying to figure out where she is. What are you doing? Oh, you smell something dead. <laughs> what do you smell? Oh, <laughs> what do you smell? Yeah, what this is what we've done in terms of her feeding situation. So she always has access to her clean water and uh, she's eating her kibble, which the food dish is off the ground so that the Iggy's don't come in here and try and smell thin. But uh, this gives us the ability to have her own feeding space for the time being because she's not comfortable being around the other dogs with food at all. So we feed her in there, a, a space where she can be and eat alone in peace and not be bothered by any of the other dogs. And up in our bedroom, we got her a much larger kennel for her to sleep in. She has been, I think she responds really well to a crate, like, you know, a dog, it's like a den. So she's been going in there really nicely and happily at night. Sometimes she wakes up like, you know, six or 7 a.m. and wants to go pee. And then sometimes she wants to go back to bed. So this has been working really well for her. Hopefully, maybe someday, you know, we'll transition her into just a bed. But for now, I think the crate is helping her feel safe and protected. So we're doing that. Welcome to day five. Of? Of not taking a shower or practicing any self-care. <laughs> I'm kidding. Welcome to day five of our lovely girl. I think this is probably the last day that we'll film and then we're just tell people that we have her. You know, there's a lot of reasons that we wait and don't tell people that she's here. People have all kinds of opinions and all kinds of things that they wanna say and what you're doing wrong and everything like that. But the fact of the matter is, this is our house, our pack, our dogs, and we're doing what we think is, you know, the best for her and the best that we can. And so helpful knowledge is appreciated, but <laughs> some of it is not helpful. And I just think it's better if we figure things out without the opinions of, you know, everybody and every everyone and everything. Bunny's doing very well. And to be honest with you, I just, you know, since it's almost been a week with her and, you know, we are leaving in a couple weeks, she's going to go stay with her foster daddy and her two giant horses of Greyhound foster brothers, <laughs> which, you know, at first I was, you know, feeling really upset about, but I think it will be a really good thing for her to go back and reconnect with some big dogs and, you know, have a little space away from uh, the little ones. And then we can reunite after a week and, you know, we get back into our routine and everything. And uh, with him, she spends more time alone. She spends a lot more time without people. So it might be a good thing, you know, to have a little break and then come back. Yeah. And um, I just, you know, I want to tell you my thoughts and my experience so far. And Julian, you can chime in any time that you want. But we've been having challenges and successes, which is really important. Because things that are challenging are having a timid dog. She's scared of a lot of stuff. She's never seen it before. She tends to adjust and be like, okay, I decided that that's not gonna kill me and I'm okay with that. If she gets into a scenario where she's overwhelmed, which is easy to tell when a dog is overwhelmed, you know, the best thing to do is just remove her from that situation and get her somewhere where she can calm down because there's no helping a dog once they're in that panic state. And it's been really good for us to see her in scenarios of both of those situations you know what's something that she's willing to sort of be desensitized to right now like kitchen noises for example you know like she's doing okay with some dishes and then if she gets up and she starts seeming like that's kind of scary you know you just stop and you do a little bit at a time uh another thing that's challenging is that unlike a puppy you know like with a puppy they're ready to be here they don't have fear they're just excited there's a lot of love going on you know they may not necessarily respond to you or give a fuck about you but you want to get them out in the world and seeing people and you know seeing everything and they're super excited to do that but with a rescue dog it's okay to have moments of like healing and rest. And you know, we've been doing our best to take her on walks and do things that will help her, you know, with energy and that kind of thing. But that moments of quiet and like sitting and if she wants to sit in her bed or her crate or wherever she feels safe, like that's okay. And the dogs interacting, like if they don't wanna be friends, if they just wanna coexist, that's okay because yeah. 
our you know number one job is to give her a safe home and a safe place to live and give her what she needs while also keeping our own dogs safe and that's that's been like for at least for me and i know for you too like one of the biggest learning curves here is like understanding that we want to do right by her we want to expose her to things and show her that things are not going to hurt her but at the end of the day she's the dog that she is and Mm -hmm. we are here for whatever that whatever that requires right and over time, you know, I know that more of her personality will come out. She'll begin to feel more comfortable. And, you know, that's what you could only hope for. Yeah. But that it's okay. Just understanding that we need to move at her pace. And that she is a new dog, but she's not a puppy. And she has a lot of things that she needs to feel comfortable with before she can do dog stuff, you know? And that's fine. Yeah. And this level of coexisting is healthy socialization. And a lot of it, so she has growled at Kermit. Both times he tried to get into her bed. And that's just teaching boundaries with Kermit. And it is, like, I'm not going to lie. It's scary when you hear a big dog <coughs> growl at your small little dog. But for those of you that know Kermit, there is no place in this house that Kermit can't sit. He sits, He they sleep in a dog pile on yeah. top of each other. He sleeps on us. He can't wait to sit on our guests. And he's entitled to every inch of the house. Every inch of the house. Yeah. There is no place where he cannot go. And, you know, you can do a fair amount of training and teaching with him that don't go in her crate, don't go in her bed. But, like, you know, when he gets excited and we get up and we're, you know, going to move to another room or whatever... And he's, he just, he's interested in her. He likes her. And she growled at him and he did not read her body language. And, you know, you ask yourself, okay, that's good. Thank you for warning him. Thank you for warning us. You know, a growl is, is good. That's establishing boundaries in space. But when Kermit doesn't read that, you know, what's the next step? Is it a nip? Is it a snap? Is it a bite? But at least she's willing to warn him. And it's more, I'm sure, as a lot of you who have rescued dogs can relate, it's you know more retraining your established dogs with the new dog. Because she's, in theory, a pretty easy dog. You know, aside from some of the fearfulness, yeah. she's just, she's a wonderful girl. And she's ready to learn and ready to live her life. But it's teaching Kermit that you can't just go and sit wherever you want. You need to respect space because these dogs don't have their own beds. You know, they have their own food dishes, but they all eat together and that kind of stuff. They're constantly just like in each other's space and sitting on each other and that kind of stuff. And it's unfamiliar for them to have a big warm dog that looks fun to sit on that just maybe doesn't want that. They have their own ways of communicating that with each other. But it's our job to also help them understand that because, for lack of a better word, some of them are dumb. I'm looking at you boys. If we had just rescued her, this would be a really easygoing thing. But the fact that we're assimilating her into an already established pack of small dogs, and it's, you know, it's really stressful. And it's not all like rainbows and butterflies. This is a challenge. This is a daily challenge that takes a lot of time and energy and effort but that it is worth it you know we have moments of like this is really hard we did this because she needs a home and we have a home and we are two willing and able people with the time and energy and effort it takes to give her the life that she deserves but you know part of waiting is that i think some people have you know a a misconception about greyhounds in general or rescue dogs that it would be like oh, bring your dog in, we want to see your dog, and, you know, where is she, why why is she sitting there, or why does she have a muzzle on, or that kind of thing, and the fact of the matter is, is that we, you know, waited a week to say that we have her, you know, because we need time to adjust, our dogs need time to adjust, she needs time to adjust, but that also, like, if, if we move at her pace, that that's okay, and I hope you guys are respectful and understanding of that, you know, this is a very long process, and we're in it with her for the long haul and i adore her and love her but that you know parts of it are hard parts of it are sad parts of it are scary and i hope that we're doing right by her always and by our other dogs as well you know we're just willing to put in the time and the work but that you know for those of you that are like oh do an easter egg hunt with your big dog like it's 
it's probably going to be a long time, fam. I mean, you know we, what I'm under saying? we understand the expectation for you guys to be excited about our new dog because of all the stuff we do uh, on video and stuff with, with, dogs, the, with the other yeah. dogs. So I we get it, but at the same time, it is it is just going to be a learning curve for you guys as well as it is for us. Yeah, that this is. Uh, a lot different and we're just going to try our best to always make her happy and do right by her and let her adjust and heal at her own pace at her own pace which means you might not see a lot of her which which is okay and, yeah. and it's just going to be kind of how it goes right i think managing everyone's expectations of her is important even though it's you know it's not necessary she's our dog and that's all that matters is that we're caring for her and doing right by her but i I do just want to say, and I would ask, you know, that you guys are respectful of her boundaries as we are. And we have a lot of resources available to us through her adoption agency and all that kind of stuff, but that we're willing to do anything that it takes to make sure that, you know, she has a good, safe life and that our dogs also have a good, safe life as well. The harder the rain, the bigger the rainbow. And right now, like I said, I imagine many of you who have rescued animals know what that feels like. You know, the first week, first month first six months first year yeah. it's it's hard and it's a lot and there's a lot for her to learn but you have to do it at the pace for her not at your pace and i think the challenge obviously will be worth it when she has the ability to just be a dog the things that have been i'm very grateful for are the fact that she's not afraid of people She's not afraid of little kids. Other dogs. She's not afraid of other dogs on walks. Uh, her prey drive isn't like something that we're dealing with at all. She's not interested in chasing squirrels or birds. She's not a dog that when the door opens, she bolts for it. She's very quiet. She's very sweet. And she's, but we could go on and on. She's, she's a great very, dog. She's very willing to learn and she's curious. Yeah. One of the more helpful things is that She's very respectful of the other dog's space. Yeah. A lot of things in our life have changed and will continue to change for the better of her. And it's rewarding, but it's it's hard. I will tell you a positive has been the lack of Aries energy going on because you can't have Aries energy right now. No. <laughs> All things considered, she's a wonderful dog and it just takes a long time and a lot of patience. And the good news is that we have both of those things. Yeah. Right, Julian? That's right. But I love you. I love our new girl. And I hope that she can be happy here. Yeah. She seems like she's doing pretty good. I guess we'll keep you updated. But also know that if there is no update, it just means that we're working. You know? So yeah, that's our girl. That's Bunny. That's Bunny. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for your understanding and support. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.